This is part of a continuing series on building tokens. Today we're going to build a freezable token, I mean a pausable token, where the owner, the original deployer, can call a function to pause transfers. And no one will be able to send tokens, make transfers, until that contract is unpaused. We do this by inheriting from Open Zeppelin's pausable contract. I searched public GitHub code for imports of this, and there's like 46,000 examples, so this is a very popular thing to do. Now why add pausable to a contract? During an initial coin offering, when you've recently created a token and you're distributing it, you may not want anyone trading or dumping those tokens until a specified time. Or a vulnerability has been discovered in the contract and you don't want anyone trading it until that's fixed. Let's go write this token. I have a hard hat project here with some packages already installed. So I have hard hat ethers, hard hat waffle, contracts from Open Zeppelin, Chai, Ethereum, Waffle, Ethers, and Hardhat. And then I have my Hardhat project set up. I'm using 0.8.9 and then I have required Hardhat Waffle in the Hardhat config file. So let's start off by creating a new directory and we'll call this contracts. And then inside we'll create a file and this is our token. I'm going to name this freeze frame token.stall. Okay, our usual pragma solidity 0.8.4. And then we're going to start by importing the basic ERC20 contract with the ERC functions we expect, like transfer, transfer from, approve, and a bunch of getters to get us things like balances on certain wallets or the total supply. Then we'll import the pausable contract, which gives us access to some modifiers and private functions that we'll use in a minute. And lastly, we'll import ownable. And this gives us access to the only owner modifier, which we're going to use very shortly contract freeze frame token is ERC20 pausable and ownable. Here we're inheriting from those contracts so we get all their functionality here. Now let's start the constructor. Constructor ERC20, and again, we're going to pop the name in here. And then we need the symbol, so I'm going to call this FFT. I'm pretty sure that's already taken, but that's, that's fine. We're just going to be creating this locally. And this functionality comes from the ERC20 contract we imported. We can see this contract inside the Open Zeppelin's contract library. If we look inside node modules, Open Zeppelin, contracts, token, ERC20, ERC20, and we have that here. So here we have the constructor, which we're inheriting, and you can see how we used it. We are passing in the name and then we are passing in the symbol, and those are being assigned to private variables. Now in here, we're going to call the private mint function. And we are going to mint some tokens when this contract is deployed. And we'll mint those all to the sender, to the deployer of this contract. And let's mint 1,000. So we'll initially create 1,000 tokens. And we will assume that they have 18 decimal places. Um, that's what this decimals here returns 18. So we're doing 10 to the power of 18 to give us those 18 decimal places on our thousand tokens. And if we look in that ERC20 contract we imported from, we also have min here. And this is what we're calling, where we pass in the address we want to allocate them to as well as the amount that we want to create. Now we're going to define a public function, pause, so function, pause, public, 
It is public, but it has this modifier on it called only owner. And that prevents anyone but the deployer of this contract from calling it. And in here, we're going to call the private function pause. And this comes from that pausable contract that we imported from Open Zeppelin. And we can see that as well. So that's in security and it's pausable. And this is actually a very small and easy to navigate contract. It has a modifier when not paused and when paused. We'll be using those again very shortly. And then it also has pause and unpause. And this is what our this is what we're calling in the contract we just created. And it just sets this private variable called paused to true. And the modifiers, when not paused and when paused, they look at that. And only owner, that comes from ownable. And we can see that in access, ownable. And that's, that's only owner, the modifier here, which checks the owner. And that is just checking that the owner, which is the deployer of the contract, is equal to the address that's calling a uh, function that this modifier is attached to. So we have pause, and now we will create one more unpause because obviously we don't want to be stuck with a paused contract forever. And this is basically the exact same, except we're calling the private function unpause. Lastly, we need to override the before token transfers hook. And that is coming from the original ERC20 contract. So you can see we have two hooks here in this ERC20.saw. We have before token transfer and after token transfer. And the idea behind these is they allow you to insert logic either before or after any token transfer takes place. In the case of pausing and preventing transfers, it makes sense to ins it makes sense to insert some logic before a transfer. So copy this, paste it back in here, and we're going to make a couple small changes. So instead of virtual, we're going to keep the internal part. We're going to add when not paused modifier as well as override. And then inside the logic, we're going to say super before token transfer. Oops, we only need one underscore. And then we'll say from to and amount. And by adding when not pause modifier to the before token transfer hook, we are going to be checking this every single time before tokens are transferred. And if the contract is paused, this will prevent tokens from being transferred. Now, does this actually work? Well, we need to write some tests to find that out. So let's write two really quick tests. Create a folder called test. And then inside this, create a file, and this will be freeze frame token.js. And I think I forgot a semicolon here. Now let's write some tests. I have a test directory as well as a file called freeze frame token.js. So create that, and then we're going to write two functions. One does a plain old transfer and ensures that it works. And the other pauses the contract, tries to transfer tokens, and then we should expect the transfer to fail because the contract itself is paused. So let's go, this will be very fast. So we'll have const, we need to import expect for our tests equals require chai describe freeze frame token function and open that up. And then here we need uh, before each where we deploy the contract. And this will be a sync function. And inside, we want an owner and another signer so that we have two wallets that we can try to transfer tokens between. And then we'll do await ethers dot get signers to get those two signers. And then we will say freeze frame token equals await ethers dot get 
contract factory factory again we will pass in the name here as a string as well as who will be deploying this and in our case it will be the signer called owner and then we'll say freeze frame token equals await freeze frame token dot deploy and that will deploy the contract in the context of our test. Now let's start our first test. So we'll say describe and we will be describing the transfer function. Function, open this up and we'll have it. Let's make sure this is in a string. It transfers tokens when unpaused and unpaused is the default. So async function, and let's copy and paste this for our second test. And it should be it reverts transfers when paused. So we're gonna write the first one and then we'll copy and paste most of it into the second one. So let owner balance and let signer to balance. We're gonna check how much of this token is in each of their wallets before and after the transfer. And then we'll say owner balance equals await freeze frame token balance of, this is a function that was inherited to our contract from the ERC20 contract. Owner dot address, copy and paste that. Signer two. Signer two address. Now I want to expect that the owner balance to equal ethers, well, this should be inside the parentheses, ethers dot utils dot parse ether 1000. I want to expect the owner to have 1000 of this token because in our constructor we are creating, we are minting 1000, allocating those to the owner. And then I should expect the balance of signer two to be zero because we haven't transferred any to them yet, but we will now. So if we say await our contract dot connect owner dot transfer, and we are going to transfer some tokens to signer two signer two dot address and we will transfer 250 of these tokens now let's just copy and paste all this and now if we transferred 250 the owner should have 750 and signer two should have 250 because 750 plus 250 is a thousand and that's it for this test. Now copy and paste all of this into our second test. And right before the transfer, we are going to say await freeze frame token dot connect owner dot pause. And that should pause our contract. And then we're going to try and transfer some tokens but we should expect that to fail. So we are gonna wrap this in expect. To be. To be. Reverted with. And I think the error is possible. Paused. And then we should, because that failed, we should still expect the owner to have 1,000 and signer 2 to have 0.
and I just realized that this should have been before each. Otherwise, the state at the end of one of our tests is going to continue into the next test. So let's give this a run. NPX hardhat test. And they both pass. And that's it. It's that easy to create a token with plausible functionality, which it can actually make a lot of sense to add if you're doing an ICO or if there's a hack and you need to freeze the transfer of tokens. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.